Hello and welcome to our JCN Kitchen Chats today. That's what we're going to call it. So Christine and I want to share some of our favourite gluten and dairy-free breakfasts with you. And we're going to do a bit of a show and tell, show you some products, talk a bit about how we make them. Um, yes, they're gluten and dairy free, but we'll also talk about the nutritional benefits as we go, anything else that comes up. But a lot of these breakfast options we're talking about are common breakfasts that one, we use ourselves and two, we use a lot with our clients, often prescribing them in food plans. But we thought it'd be great to actually physically get in the kitchen and talk food because we love food, right? Exactly. <laughs> I think that's what drew us to this, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a little bit of slightly craziness. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't even talk about who's going to go first. Would you like me to go first? Or would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, you dive in. Go I'll dive in. It. Okay. So we were thinking before we jumped on here today, Christine was um, pointing out that leaning into our natural I don't want to say strengths, but just what we naturally tend to do in the kitchen. So I'm more of a, I guess, cook and love to make everything from scratch. Christine definitely loves to cook, but she also likes things to be. <laughs> not to that degree. <laughs> not to that level, let's just say. So for me, I'm going to share things that you would make from scratch, still with the intention of being quick and easy. Um, but you'll see with Christine, she's going to be pulling in more ready-made options that you can throw together so it should mesh nicely with what everyone is after so um quite aptly you can see over my left shoulder here I've got a half eaten bowl of porridge from this morning that I haven't quite gotten through because I made it double the size so this is something <laughs> that I wanted to talk through first so uh, I have a gluten and dairy free porridge which I'll link in the notes of the YouTube that you can go to to get the recipe. It's a really popular, very um, nutritionally dense porridge that, yes, is gluten and dairy-free. However, you could swap out some of the ingredients and make it like with normal oats or with normal milk, and I'll talk about that as we go. So the base that I wanted to show you, um, grab two different options. So the original recipe is with quinoa flakes. So this is just a jar of quinoa flakes. There's not much left. Um, or you can buy it in packets from the supermarket, health food store. So here's just an example of that. Heavily marked down, might I add. But I often get <laughs> mine from places like Source Bulk Foods or um, I'm trying to think of some equivalents. There's one here locally called Feel Good. No, this is sponsored. We're just sharing where we get products from. I like to buy them in bulk simply because it's more affordable um, and you can kind of control how much you want to get. So the base is quinoa flakes. You'll see in the recipe, I know it off by heart, it's two big heap tablespoons. Personally, I'm doubling that at the moment because I'm doing a lot of training. Um, but, yeah, two big heap tablespoons for quinoa flakes that go straight into a saucepan. Then... Cinnamon. Cinnamon is like the life of this porridge. A lot of people will say with quinoa flakes that they taste a bit bitter and I totally respect that. I think the beauty of this porridge is how it masks that with the right additional ingredients. So it's got a good amount of cinnamon in there, about half a teaspoon that goes in with the quinoa flakes. Then the protein. So the quinoa has put in our complex carbs. Um, now we want to make sure there's protein in there. And Christine will talk about this too with how she does this. A lot of breakfasts like cereals and granolas and porridges often lack protein. So this recipe actually uses a protein powder. I've just got this one because why do I have it? I think it was just something I could get with my online orders. It's fine. It's just a plain protein powder. So you can use a vanilla, chocolate, whatever you like for your porridge. But yeah, this one I like in the recipe is just a plain. And I put two big heaped tablespoons of that in it. Um, personally, I'm adding a bit more of that at the moment too. But protein, quinoa flakes, cinnamon. Then it's actually called salted honey porridge. 
salt. I'll show you my salt shaker. Um, <laughs> it's got about half a teaspoon of salt in it. You can add more or less if you like, but it will really work well with the sweetness of the porridge. And vanilla. So I find if you miss this, it does make a difference again in like that little bit of bitterness of the quinoa coming through. So that combo mm. of the vanilla and the cinnamon, yeah, it all it all really starts to help. Um, and then do I have it? Oh, I do. Half a banana. So chopped up half oh, a banana yeah. goes in and gets all thrown in the pot. Um, you can then cook it up on water. The recipe uses water, but you can also swap that for milk. But honestly, the beauty of those ingredients is that it does work with water. Like it tastes fine um, or delicious, I should say. And then as it's been like bubbling away on the stove, or you could do it in the microwave, uh, that's when you add the honey. So the honey will bring that sweetness and it'll work with the saltiness and the banana and the cinnamon. And it's, it's really yum. So I just put that into a bowl once it's done, exhibit A over my shoulder. And then usually I'll top it with any seasonal fruit, peanut butter. Usually, to be honest, I put yogurt on top too. I know that sounds weird, but I like yogurt on top of it. Um, I just don't have that today because I ran out, but luckily Christine's got an example of the yogurt. So it probably takes about, I'm going to say guys, like five minutes max. Like I will often cook this like in the door from the gym. I'll make it, it's on the stove and I'm sitting down in five minutes. It's so quick. And that's the thing with quinoa flakes. Like it's just, it's like instant oats. They're so, so quick. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, yes, it's from scratch but it's very quick. It's very high in protein. It gives you complex carbs. You're getting fats. The fats are coming more from the toppings. So unless you, yeah. like if you just ate it as it was, there wouldn't be much fat, but when you add some nut butter or nuts or so forth, you'll get your, um, your fats coming through there. So yeah, that's my porridge. Um, yeah. Nutritionally, I've talked a little bit about it. I think the last thing I would say, unless there's a question you want to ask me about it, Christine, would be from besides the nutritional side, from a gut health side, yes, it's gluten-free, yes, it's dairy-free. It's also relatively uh, suitable for a lot of sensitive guts because of the ingredients that are in it. However, what I'll often have clients maybe do, depending on how they are with the banana, is I might have them either take that out and use uh, a vanilla protein powder just to still give it that sweetness without the banana if you're someone that can't tolerate banana or I might change the banana for a different type of fruit they can tolerate and same with the honey that's probably the other ingredient depending on what you can handle if you do have gut issues is you can swap that for an alternate sweetener that you do well with or again if you take out the plain protein powder and use like a vanilla or a chocolate that often has stevia or something in there so that, that does work. I have done that myself um, just purely out of like what I've got in the house and it still tastes delicious. So that's my porridge. Yum. Excellent. <laughs> I was going to say also just with the banana, what I mm -hmm. can sometimes do is like often you might not have fresh bananas and I've made a similar-ish protein uh, porridge, sorry, but I've used a frozen banana and yes. you cook that through. And I don't know if, well, I'm sure you're familiar, but other people might not be, but when you make smoothies, for example, and you freeze the bananas mm -hmm. and you throw them in, like it, it's like almost a completely different fruit. It's like so much sweeter. And so obviously it's great because if you haven't got any fresh ones on hand, but it just adds even more sweetness. If you are sort of somebody that tends to want that sweeter breakfast, maybe that could be something. That's so well. true. And I've done that with this when I've just been out of fresh banana and I've got some frozen and you're so right. It changes the flavor. And also because it's frozen, it just kind of melts and disintegrates in too. So you don't yeah. get the chunks of warm banana through it. You actually get that kind of sweeter banana -y flavor. So it's quite yeah. nice. Yeah. Yum. <laughs> So how about you? What have you got up your sleeve? What's the first breakfast? All right. Well, I will go with my, um, probably my, yeah, I would say it's probably my first choice. And it's something that I have had for, I tried to work this out the other day. 
I think it's been like at least 10 years since I've been having wow. this and it's called the um, Blend 11 by Good Mix. And the reason that I've got such a small one here, and obviously this is not sponsored or anything like we said, is that I purchased a small one so that I can take it when I travel because I like it that much. <laughs> and But normally you can get like whopping bags. But essentially it is, um, I guess it, it's kind of like a muesli. It's quite, um, I don't know how you describe it. It's more seedy than anything. Like there's mm-hmm. no um, like oats or anything like that in it. Basically it's obviously got 11 um, ingredients. So it's got chia seeds, almonds, Pepitas, coconut, buckwheat, flaxseed, sesame seeds, goji berries, raw cacao nibs, puffed amaranth, and puffed millet as well. And the trick with this is that you do need to essentially activate it or soak it overnight. And you basically, I just pop it in like a little glass sort of Tupperware, and you'll put in, I think it's around a third of a cup, something like that. And you basically put half the quantity then of water on top and that'll just basically allow a lot of the seeds that are otherwise more difficult to digest, a lot more easier for the for the body to digest essentially. Um, but I, I, be honest, it's probably not the most um, sweetest, you know, like if you're used to having like cereals or granolas or things like that, it's it's quite different it's more for me at least I have it more for it's you know health benefits I still make it delicious but it's not like your typical sort of granolas um but with one serving you're looking at around 10 grams of protein already for just one serving and that's without toppings or anything like that which is quite decent when you compare it to other cereals or granolas but what I tend to do is I will have it with um so obviously that's gluten-free Then I do have it with um, a dairy-free yogurt. So I tend to use a coconut yogurt most of the time. You can obviously get whatever brand you like, but I get just a natural plain coconut yogurt. Um, So again, this is adding more of the fat. So this is in itself is actually quite high in fat as well. And then when you're adding the coconut, so that's allowing you to really have a meal that's a lot more sustaining. So it's not going to spike your blood sugar like your typical cereals or what have you would. Um, so then I add in some fruit. So ten, generally I tend to have some sort of berries at the moment. I'm loving raspberries. Um, when it's like more summertime, I'll have things like, um, mango or banana or that sort of, even papaya goes really nicely on top. Um, then if it really does depend on your needs in terms of like your energy intake, you know, how much protein do you need? You could also even go in with like, um, additional fats like in some nut butter you probably don't need it because they are you know there's already fat in the the seeds and the yogurt but it's just basically makes it yummy um and then to up to amp up the protein there's a couple of options so you can actually like just did add a protein powder and sometimes that will actually stir through like a plain protein or even a vanilla sort of protein into the yogurt if you're wanting to to add a little bit more protein to the yogurt. Um, The other thing that I find quite helpful is uh, collagen powder when it comes to this sort of meal where you're not really wanting to get like a a vanilla flavour through it. You're just wanting it to be a bit more subtle or even unflavoured and you can get just like a plain sort of collagen powder this is just the one that I use because it just is yeah tasteless essentially and if I think it's like one tablespoon is like nearly 10 grams of protein in that so when you're sort of combining all of that together you're looking at around 20 to 30 grams of protein which is pretty decent when you're comparing it to cereal or granola or something like that so that's that tends to be my breakfast. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that you do need to soak it overnight. And so you've got to remember that because sometimes you wake up in the morning and be like, no, I forgot to, mm. to soak it overnight. Um, I think you can probably get away with it for a couple of hours, but yeah, it's something that you do need to, to bear in mind. So that's probably my my current favorite. So I've been dabbling in other ones, but I've tended to come back to the good mix just because it does. I mean, they, they tout, I think, what do they say? It's something like the best poos ever or something like that. (laughs) So if that's what you're looking for, some extra support with, you know, the gut health, um, then yeah, this is one. They do also have like other 
um, like ones that have more dried fruit and things in there. But that's basically a, a staple for me at the moment. Does it work if you don't soak it? Like, is it just is it just way too crunchy and? Um. Oh, it's palatable. Like it would be yeah. like I I've done that before. I even like I've I think the the shortest I've done it is like maybe 15 minutes and I've just allowed yep. some water to soak into it. And it mm. doesn't really affect the taste so much. It's more just it can be more difficult, I think, for the body to break down because there's a lot of like yep. flax seeds in there and that sort of thing. And yep. Like when you're adding that water, it sort of allows like the puffed amaranth and the millet to sort mm. of soak it up a bit. So yep. it's just, yep. yeah, it's more enjoyable more than anything. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Have you tried also, um, like the yogurt you showed is definitely one that I'll use, um, but also the Vita soy, soy yogurt. It's, I wish I had I some here. I meant to have some and um, I, I don't have it in the kitchen to show, but that would be the other yogurt, I guess, with respect to the next one that I'll do. That's, I'm really, I feel like I've been looking for a dairy-free yogurt for so long that it's more yogurty. <laughs> Like I love yeah. that one and I there's a like Koyo and a few other ones in their naturals that have definitely got a certain flavour, but the Vita Soy, yeah. particularly the plain, which is really hard to get, but even the vanilla, they're just a little bit more yogurty for lack of a better word. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then they're not as um, like the fats aren't as high. There's a little bit more protein, so the profile's kind of a little bit more like yogurt. But some people, yes. some people don't like that either. Um, it just, yeah, it comes down to flavour a lot of the time too. Yeah, and that is something that I like to keep in mind, especially when I'm working with a lot of patients that have, yeah, we, we sort of need to be mindful of that fat intake as well, more so in the saturated fat. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's obviously we've sort of, come away from like fats are bad and that sort of side of things and we definitely want to have good quality fats in there but I do notice that sometimes when you people are you know they are dairy free and they've got coconut yogurt and they've got things like this you know those fats can creep up mm. especially that saturated fat and so it's just something that you do need to bear in mind and that yeah maybe a soy yogurt would be more suitable for somebody that needs to mm. to just keep an eye on that especially mm, when we're sure. looking at sort of certain gut conditions yeah. and things like that love it all right well I'll go into my number two so yeah. if you know me at all you'll know that I also have uh, a strong passion for pancakes as a breakfast option I did think about doing a savory but I was like no let's stick with the classics and why I wanted to also do the pancake is that it's almost like taking a lot of the ingredients that we just talked about for the porridge and just cooking them in a different way. So I often say to my clients, like if you've got these ingredients, you've pretty much got three quarters of what you need anyway. Um, and I also find the pancake is very quick. It's probably maybe from start to finish more like 10 minutes. And I'll often start clients, if they love the idea of this pancake, I'll start them on the weekend and get them used to doing it. But I find it's something you can definitely do on a busy morning, like cook it up, um, walk away from the stove, do a few things, come back, flip it. As long as you don't forget, um, you, you're pretty good. So I love this as an alternate when I just want something that's got a bit more, I don't know, like it's just a palette. I guess it's a palette thing. Like sometimes you're just like, what do I feel like in the morning? It's probably, may I would say maybe a little bit heavier uh, just because of the nature of it being something that's cooked. Um, yeah, but let us let me show you. So, again, there's, there's not too much of it left, but buckwheat flour is usually the base that I'll use as a gluten-free flour. The good thing about this pancake is you can swap out any flour that you like. Um, it will work with sorghum, millet, um, oat flour, depending on how you are with oats. And yes, if you don't need to do gluten free, you could just use a regular flour. So um, it's two, again, the two tablespoons. So two tablespoons or two really heaped tablespoons of the flour that goes straight into a bowl. Then the banana again. So half a banana goes in and that gets mashed in. Then protein powder, we're seeing a common theme here. 
So two tablespoons of this goes into the bowl. So that's our protein. Our buckwheat flour is our carbohydrate. We're starting to add a little bit more um, sweetness and fiber with the banana going in. So that's all in there. We haven't even mixed it yet. Then a different ingredient would be just a touch of baking powder. So it's about from memory without looking at the recipe, I think it's about eighth of a teaspoon or a good pinch of baking powder. It doesn't have to go in, but it will make the pancake a little bit more puffy, um, give it a little bit more rise. Um, I think with gluten-free baking or anything gluten-free, it's often known for being really super stodgy. So this will give it that little bit more fluffiness, which I like. So I'll always have some of that ready to rumble. Um, again, it's just in a big jar because I buy it in bulk. Um, the vanilla, again, I don't think, I'll link in the recipe, I don't think I might, yeah, I'm not sure if I've got this in the actual recipe. So I'll personally, I'll kind of oscillate between whether I use this or not, but it is nice just to add in like a little dab of that. And then I don't have it out, but an egg. So that's the other varying uh, recipe. So the wet ingredients are essentially the egg and the banana, and then the dry ingredients we've been through. So once that's all in a bowl, you just get in there with a spoon and I just mash the banana in against the egg and mix it all up. And then I just add a little bit of water. Now the water is based on bringing it to a consistency that I'll refer to like a cake batter. You don't want a thin crepe batter. Um, yeah, you don't want it too runny. The idea is we want to be able to pour it into a hot oil pan and it's going to actually cook as just one pancake. So you do want to have that thickness to it. The water amount is in the recipe, but it, it's a good practice because all of our flours are a little different and egg sizes are different and banana sizes are different. Just to add a touch of water, then mix it and just get it to that right consistency. But once again, that putting it all in a bowl, mixing it up just takes a couple of minutes. Um, while you're doing that, put a pan on to heat up, a little bit of oil. Um, and yes, it, pour it in, cook it as one pancake. The trick with cooking a pancake, if you've not done this before, is that you don't want the heat really hot because you'll burn it um, and then the center won't cook. It'll be raw when you flip it. So just have it on a moderate heat. And what you're looking for, so the first thing I learned to cook as a kid, you're looking for the bubbles. So once you start seeing little bubbles coming up, it's ready to flip. So it'll only take a couple of minutes on the underside. Then you just flip it and cook it on both sides. Um, I'll often just give it a little tap to see if it's cooked. You'll know what I mean if you tap it. Like if it's still raw, you'll tap it and you'll see the side of the pancake kind of ooze. Um, you'll be surprised by how big these pancakes can get when you pour it in and it's got the egg in it. It's got a little bit of baking powder. Like they really will puff up. So once that's done, pop it on your plate and then it's just about what you want to top it with because the good thing again about this pancake is, is the protein's in there, the carbs are in there. We've, this time we've got a little bit of fat with the egg yolk. We've got a little bit of olive oil on the pan. So honestly, as far as toppings, you can do whatever you like. Personally, I'll always put a spread of a nut butter. Um, I do like peanut butter, so it'll often go on um different seasonal fruits and then we're just talking before about yogurt this is probably again where i'll would use a yogurt for that creaminess i do like that soy vanilla -y one or the plain one if i can get it and then you can drizzle it it doesn't need it but if you wanted a bit of honey or a bit of maple you could do that um honestly yeah there's so many variations i could talk about one of my favorites that i haven't done for ages that is more of a queensland topping because you have access to it would be this and don't knock it to try it but <laughs> salted peanut butter papaya and then lots of fresh lime over the top so nothing else but that but there's something about the fresh lime and the peanut oh, butter and the papaya it's just delicious so yeah give that a go <laughs> oh yum <laughs> that sounds That's so delicious. good uh it's no it's a good one and yeah gfdf any adaptions i would just say if you can't do egg or you're vegan, um, you can swap the egg out and do a chia egg or a flax egg, which is essentially a tablespoon of chia or flaxseed meal to three tablespoons of water. And that will work just as well. Uh, my sister does that all the time. 
or with that, just to be extra secure, you can throw in a little bit of psyllium into the batter just to make it a little bit more sticky. Uh, that'll work well. And again, from a gut point of view, I find these pancakes work really well for clients. Um, like the porridge, sometimes I'll omit the banana if needed or have them swap it. The good thing is that if you use, if you take out the banana and you do use buckwheat flour, because buckwheat flour is a really good binder, it will still work well with that egg in there. So that's just something you can pull out if needed. Um, but, yeah, it's it's quite an adaptable recipe and it does tend to suit a lot of people and it sits really well. Like I remember eons ago when um, I was going working through my own gut stuff, I used to find maybe that's why I used to share so much about pancakes when I think about it, like pancakes when made with these types of ingredients, I always found that, that they sat really, really well. So that's my pancake. I'll put the link in the notes um, and let me know if you give it a go because it's delicious. Sounds delicious. Have you ever tried um, like bulk making them? So like making them in, yeah, in bulk and then like storing them either in the fridge or freeze or anything like that? Because I know sometimes I've made like not to that extent, but like a protein pancake and I'll actually freeze them and then put them in the toaster if some mm -hmm. people are like, I don't have time and that's kind of like a, yeah, quick yeah. grab and go. Yeah. No, such a good question. I personally haven't, but clients have. I've told them to do exactly what you just said. So um, I've made it, so I've made it the night before and then warmed it in the morning, but I've said yeah. um, exactly what you just mentioned is pre-make them, freeze them or have them in the fridge and then just drop it in the toaster. That's the beauty of it being just that like one size is that you can do that and just heat it through. So yeah, absolutely. And you could just like, yeah, yeah cook up a batch and just put a bit of baking paper between them and stack them and have them ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yum. No, I think that's so, yeah. You've kind of got the best of both worlds then. Like it's homemade, you know exactly what's in it, but it's quick and easy mm. grab and go sort of thing yeah for it sure just reminds sure. me of like a pop tart type thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah. what's your fourth and final all right so I nearly did a DIY but I was like I'll stick to the you know the store-bought options and give something that's probably a little bit more familiar for people if they haven't if they're sort of in that cereal granola land at the moment. And um, it's one that I came across um, maybe a year or so ago now, and it's um, Farmer Joe. So they're, I think they are becoming quite popular now. You can get them at Coles or Woolies, so basically any supermarket um, here in Australia anyway. And they've got a few different varieties. So I actually started with a different one. Um, I think it was their almond and coconut. Um, and then actually made my way over to this one. And this is sort of taken over as my favorite. So it's uh, cinnamon, spice and almond. And I'm somebody that does enjoy cinnamon, but not over the top. So I was a little bit unsure how I'd go with this, but it's so subtle and it's just beautiful. Um, but essentially, yeah, it's fully gluten and dairy free. So this one, I believe, yeah, this one they even say is keto. So not that I really prescribe to that sort of diet at all but it's just something to bear in mind if that is of interest to you so similar to the um the blend 11 it is more high in fat in this one and i believe this one is actually a little bit more higher in saturated fat than the blend 11 so if that's something that you need to bear in mind just um, make note of that but really simple ingredients so it's got sunflower seeds coconut uh, rice malt syrup pepitas which are pumpkin seeds sesame seeds, almonds, a bit of maple syrup, macadamia oil, cinnamon and sea salt. So really straightforward, simple ingredients. Um, the reason I do really love this, it's, it is very much like a traditional granola. It's really crunchy. It's quite sweet from the, the honey, uh, sorry, from the maple syrup. Um, and it's a bit, it feels a bit more indulgent than say something like this. This is sort of my go-to for like it's health benefits, it's therapeutic benefits, and it's, yeah, it's functional, but this is more a, if I'm wanting just something that's really delicious and still gluten and dairy free. 
Um, and so that a, a similar sort of scenario, so I'll have it with some coconut yogurt. Um, it, in this sort of case, I would, if I did have access to say a soy yogurt, I think that that would probably be, um, provide a bit more of a macronutrient balance because this one is higher in fat. I tend towards more of a higher protein yogurt. Um, if you can tolerate dairy, a Greek yogurt, um, or even you can get like the high protein Greek yogurts would be um, beneficial. Um, but again, I tend to use something like a collagen powder to add in that protein. So this one, it's still quite high in protein. You're looking at around like nine grams a serve. So not quite as much as the blend 11, but um, it's still a fair whack based on it being just a pure granola. And then the carbohydrates are really quite low. So you're only looking at five grams um, for a serve, which is when you compare it to your standard granolas and, and cereals, that's quite, quite low. Um, and then whether or not you do want to add in some sort of like a nut butter or something like that, again, it wouldn't be for the fat component. It'd be more for, for taste and, um, yeah, and enjoyment. Um, but I do tend to find that the, just the collagen powder rather than like a vanilla protein works better here because you already get the sweetness from this sort of granola. Um, the other thing that I do find is that sometimes people don't really want to add in the collagen or they don't want to add in a protein yolk to the yogurt that, you know, the, the flavor profile changes is that I do find just a plain collagen powder. If you're somebody that has a coffee or tea or, you know, a matcha latte or something like that in and around breakfast time, I tend to say if you can, you know, have your beverages away from meal time. but if you're having it sort of around that half an hour before or after, you can also add in the collagen to that hot drink and it'll just dissolve. You won't even know it's there. But that way you're still getting in, you know, an extra 10 grams of protein. Um, and it's not sort of setting you up on this blood sugar roller coaster first thing in the morning. So sometimes if people wanted to start their day with a coffee or, or a matcha latte or something that's not breakfast, which is not, you know, not something I typically recommend, but if they're, you know, they're adamant with that, that's when I'd say, look, can we look at doing some sort of collagen in that beverage to really, yeah, provide a bit more protein for you to start the day. So that's mm. that's probably my second option. So yeah, yeah, no, love it, love it, love it. Do you ever mix any additional carbohydrate into the Farmer Joe? Farmer Joe's? Um, I just wait. I'm just like so mentally much. blocked on its name. <laughs> it's Farmer Joe's. Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, I should have said I do add fruit as well. Fruit, so it's yeah. not really so much a like a complex carbohydrate, but that yeah. would be more where I'm getting the carbs from. So if yeah. I'm having something yeah. like this, maybe I'd tend towards more like banana or something like that that's got a little bit more, you know, carbohydrate or mm -hmm. starch in it than something like berries or something like for that. For sure, for sure. Um, I know I've had but, some clients mix it with like um, – well, obviously we've just, yeah, you looked at quinoa flakes or even with oats, but again, depending on what their requirements are, they may not need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes what I will do, it's probably more when I use this one is I do actually mix in a little bit of oats as well, because mm -hmm. I feel like, especially on those mornings where I'm just feeling like I need something a bit more substantial the oats tend to sort of bulk it out a little bit more as mm, well. But that you makes sense. Obviously use oats or quinoa flakes or something like that just gives it that more um, almost muesli-like texture. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, and, I, and I've actually tried my hand at sort of making something like this. I haven't quite mastered it. I've got the texture and, like, the crunch and everything quite right, but it's just lacking that sweetness. So I think I might need to... Go a bit more heavy-handed on the honey or the maple syrup, but not quite there yet. I did the same, although I don't think I put that on the website. There's another one that's similar to, I think, a Freedom Foods brand that I was like, wow, that's super close. But, um, yeah, I've tried making not that one but a different one, and it was it was maybe 80% there. It was still was still good, but I was like, it's just still not quite right. It's not yeah. like when you're trying to nail the exact flavor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like so disappointing as well because you've used so many ingredients, yeah. especially if it's like nuts and seeds. It's like, I will eat yeah. this. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, beautiful. Well, we hope that those breakfasts have been helpful. If you have any questions at all about any of the meals that we've talked about, um, products, something that we haven't linked in the show notes, just leave that in the comments below and we can get back to you. Uh, likewise, if you'd like to hear other topics, particularly with respect to today and being in the kitchen, maybe it's doing some savory breakfasts and looking at that. It might be some ideas around quick lunches, dinners. We're open to suggestions. So just leave that in the show notes. But thank you for watching. It's been fun. It has. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, for sure. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye.